Yo, in this video, I will be showing you guys a bunch of small mistakes you could be making, and I will be breaking down the game state to show you why they are mistakes. And be sure to stick through all the way to the end because these are all mistakes you guys could be making that is keeping you out of the top cut of any given tournament. So please enjoy. All right, let's get into the game right here. The first mistake that he made was at 28 seconds, and he actually played the Rosanante on his two dawn turn now normally you don't use any of or you don't play any of these blockers early on that can easily be ko'd by a gadatsu or some type of trigger and you want to save them for whenever you have like a captain kid so for example on your eight dawn turn you uh, play captain kid you use his effect to play the rosinante and it protects you from rigo that is what you want to save your rosinante for however this rosinante right here is just going to get fodder he's going to be gadatsu fodder essentially so he can play gadatsu on curve and ko the rosinante or he can ko you know a cavendish or an x drake or something you know any five cost character that our bonnie player decides to play so that is the first mistake right there now the second thing that's going to happen is actually my personal it's my personal preference right here but he decides to play cavendish on his five dawn turn or i'm sorry on his six dawn turn and he will have three active dawn now in my personal opinion, I do think it's better to attack 8 here into the Gadatsu because if he really wants to save this Gadatsu, he has to dedicate two cards to save it. And of course, he won't be able to use his leader effect, but, you know, Bonnie isn't really too concerned about going down too low in health because you can just protect yourself with kid later on so i don't think it was really necessary for the uh for the leader effect to be active of course you want to you know use your leader effect as much as humanly possible but in certain situations where you want to prioritize getting targets off the board i do think it's better to not use your not saved on for your leader effect if it means your opponent discards one extra card to protect a character and if he doesn't kill that i'm sorry if he doesn't protect that gadatsu then he only has one attack anyway in which your leader effect wouldn't really do anything i hope that makes sense let me know if that doesn't make any sense so then we find ourselves in actually the next mistake that he's making which is he's going to go ahead and so he plays this cavendish on his uh eight dawn turn this anel player or i'm sorry on his nine dawn turn whichever one it is and what happens is he puts the Hawkins back into life, which I don't actually agree with. I think it's better to put the Cavendish back into life. But our player on the, um, our, our Bonnie yeah, player plays this Do Flamingo right here. And then he actually uses the Cavendish to attack into the Gadatsu. The Gadatsu dies, which is um, probably what should have happened last turn. But then he restands to Dawn. And he plays this Do Flamingo. He, locks da he locked down the Gadatsu and he locked down the Anel. So the Anel automatically can't attack next turn. So next turn, he only has one attack anyway, which means that his leader effect actually doesn't do anything because he, he can't rest anything unless the guy like sequences really poorly, which in this situation right here, it's pretty much impossible to sequence poorly unless you just don't know how to play the game. So what he should have done is he should have made him choose between attacking into Cavendish or attacking into Bonnie. Now, of course, he's going to attack into the Cavendish, but this Bonnie right here could have gotten a free search right there, unless he decides to pop the uh, the Bonnie with a Yamato, but I mean, he, which ends up not happening. I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys what, it, what it ends up happening. But basically what I'm saying is he could have gotten this free search off of the Bonnie, and then if he didn't actually have a Yamato, or some way to get rid of this Bonnie with, with a card effect like Gadatsu, then this Bonnie actually turns sideways for free and can get another search the next turn. Because you saving one Dawn for your leader effect actually doesn't do anything at all. So what ends up happening is he goes uh, 9 into nine life, which in, in my opinion I wouldn't do. I would have gone 9 into Cavendish, and then I would use the uh, Yamato right here to pop the uh, the Bonnie. But he goes 9 into life and then uses the, Caven the Yamato to pop the Cavendish, which I, I, I don't necessarily agree with. But that Bonnie could have gotten a free search if that was the case. So um, I, I definitely think that was a little bit of a mistake on both of their parts right there. And then this next mistake right here is actually immediately after the like the, the the following turn is he attacks 5k into life with the Bonnie, right? So what should happen here is he should easily just take this this hit right here because there's no way that he can unless you play even if he plays Hody Jones, he has to dedicate his whole turn to essentially sorry, I accidentally just hit my blinds right there. He has to he has to basically Hody Jones to even put the Anel player at zero. And if the Anel player just has one extra card to heal, then he just goes back to one life and he's totally fine. But what you want to do is you want to prioritize attacking characters first because they'll have less resources to protect them later on. So, for example, if you attack five with Bonnie into his life, he can easily just take it and then um, have more cards to protect this Katakuri. So you always attack characters first and then you attack into the life. So, in my opinion... or 
well, definitely the, the right play is attack with the Kata, with the uh, Do Flamingo into the Katakuri, make him waste two cards, then you give him a card um, and put him at one life with the Bonnie. And then obviously you get him closer and closer to um, to dying, right? Is is you 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 get as many cards out of their hand as humanly possible, or get a bunch of characters off the board, and then you overwhelm them with a bunch of attacks. That's what you do against Anel right here. So he attacked out of sequence. He attacked with the Bonnie first when it should have been the Doflamingo first. However, he messes up big time because he attacks with Bonnie into life. Um, and then I believe he he actually counters out, which is a big mistake right here. And then he doesn't actually attack with the Doflamingo right here. Instead, he decides to freeze the Doflamingo and the Katakuri. But for some reason, um, for some reason, he decided to do that. However, um, the issue with that is these are only temporary fixes to your problem. Like, like they only lock them for one turn. So if you can prioritize actually getting them off the board, it's even better than freezing because freezing actually doesn't really do anything, you know, long term so why not just get cards out of his hand right now and use your doflamingo to your advantage worst case scenario he plays a 10 cost ace next turn and then either doesn't gain health and and then rushes into either your life or katakuri i'm sorry or doflamingo for 1k or he just heals and then your doflamingo basically just goes uncontested because it's very unlikely that he's going to boost up yamato to even contest the doflamingo right here and if he does it's an easy like 1k or 2k counter out and if he decides to boost his yamato up even higher to try to contest the doflamingo then he's not playing his big characters that he needs to heal like ace or yamato so that's actually what he should have done right there so the next one actually goes all the way to um 10 the 10 minute mark right here let's read this board state right here so he goes um he attacks with the doflamingo right here before searching with bonnie so i'll tell you why this is really important and for those of you guys who can't read the board state it's one it's three doflamingos which is really good and then one jewelry bonnie right here and then obviously the leader bonnie so what you should do is you want to play every turn with perfect knowledge as to what you're going to do that turn. And you can't exactly do that if you still have a search or a draw at your disposal. So for example, it's better to search with the Bonnie here to see if you have any, any other plays. And if you don't have any other plays, that's when you dedicate a ton of your Dawn to actually clearing the board or like attacking into life or something like that. The thing is, he... he at this point right here, let's read this board state. Anel has three life and one card in hand. And he has three big attacks. All of these attacks are either equal to or greater than the opponent's attacks right now. So he can easily just math out, basically wipe all three of these characters off the board, and then still do something else, um, still do something else, right? So for example, like search with Bonnie, wipe all three characters off the board, and then play like a Rosinante or maybe even a, in a Rouge or something like that, and then call it a turn. All he'll have is an ace and then his leader, which is, you know, especially if you save a Donna, that's just basically an ace. That's all you have to deal with. So what he does here is he attacks with the with the Doflamingo into the um Ten category. Into the category right here. And the category goes down, right? that's that's to be expected but what he should have done is he should have attacked he should have just searched with bonnie first and then attacked because then i'll show you what he ends up doing actually he attacks with the doflamingo into i believe it is either yamato or ace either one and he uses the last card in his hand which is a 2k counter to counter out and the reason that is a mistake is it becomes it comes up to haunt him later on and i'll show you guys exactly i'll skip forward to 1057 where he actually ends up attacking with the Bonnie. Or actually, no, he decides not to attack with the Bonnie, but he decides to use the rest of his turn to search with Bonnie. And I believe it's like two Bonnies and an in a, in a, in a Rouge. He searches with Bonnie and then he plays a Rouge. But guys, the much better turn right there was just to play... Uh, I'm sorry, was just to search with Bonnie, clear both of these characters. Because, like, you can clear Ace and Yamato and that Katakuri. Maybe you don't have enough Dawn to play the Aruj, but at that point, it doesn't really matter because, like, you're still just taking one hit anyway. And as long as you can chain blockers for the rest of the game while also resting as leader, while having these big characters on the board, that's a much better board state to be in than having three characters on the board with a leader and, and just one blocker, just a, just a measly blocker. So... That brings us into his next mistake, which is on 1537. So let's read this board state right here. So um, he decides, oh, I'm sorry. He decides to attack with his leader before searching with Bonnie once again, right? So guys, Bonnie is really valuable. It literally is one free card per turn. And for those guys who don't remember, back in OPO5, when, when Sakazuki played Monshuri, 
it was Anel's worst nightmare because what, what what we could do is we could basically infinitely loop Moncherie because Moncherie, if it's stuck to the field, can get Rebecca and then Rebecca can get Sabo. And at any time, if they had no characters on the board, every time you would uh, they would attack into the Moncherie, you block with Rebecca and then get it back the next turn with the, <laughs> with the Moncherie. And you can do the same thing here with Bonnie, except for maybe even a little bit better because Bonnie can get the captain kid and then it can just hide behind kid for the rest of the game and of course they can pop it with gadatsu or, Yama or, or yamato but at that point at that point okay yamato killed my one cost that's totally fine and you already got your value off of it anyway the thing is he's not prioritizing the search here and he keeps attacking into life knowing it could be a trigger that could ko this body and then he wouldn't get any value if you look at his hand right now he doesn't have a whole lot of counter he has the zero cost he has a 2k he's a 1k but he has two hawkins what you're really looking for is your missing piece you're looking for captain kid you're looking for more 2ks you're looking for you know more blockers and things like that so like why not search with this body first and prioritize it especially because you know you're going to play this nine cost Zoro this turn and, and because he doesn't have any characters on the board um why not like why save a dawn for your leader effect anyway so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll show you exactly what happens he ends up 1k countering out of that which is definitely not what i expected at all you definitely want to take that hit and then he ends up playing the nine cost zoro and passes now the the issue with this is you want because the nine cost zoro comes out you want to be as aggressive as humanly possible into the uh into his life so the zoro can actually feel like he's going to end the game if that makes sense right it's like once the zoro comes out you want to you want them to feel like oh if i don't deal with it i'm completely just dead the next turn so with that being said if he knew he was going to play the zoro why not just one either search with bonnie with the extra dawn that he has because he doesn't have any characters like he doesn't have to rest anything with his leader effect so you could you could have either searched with bonnie or you could have attacked six with with uh, your leader bonnie and then you definitely even if you didn't do either of those you definitely want to attack with this 10 cost doflamingo right here because you want to put him at two life because the next turn you'll have one two three four five attacks and you are putting an l in lethal range so that is a really important thing to do because once zoro comes out you want them to be as a little as little life as possible to threaten lethal so that it feels like if they don't deal with zoro they instantly lose the only answer this deck has to zoro is raigo and you know he still would have to trash a life now of course you would trash two life if you don't attack but still like it doesn't it doesn't matter either way they're going to go down to one life regardless so giving him one card isn't really going to do a whole lot especially when you have this nine cost zoro out which is massive and you still have you know bonnie and doflamingo at your disposal so he's in a very much winning position right here but he's not capitalizing on it so our last play that we um that i noticed that actually cost him or he actually won this game funny enough but he could have cost himself the game with this play right here 1635 which is he decides to play this rosinante before he attacks but he doesn't have cavendish on the board so there's no reason to play the rosinante for example if he would have had you know rush ace for whatever reason right so like a five cost ace what what could have happened was he could have found a way like if he triggered into something or he played this like a, a maru for whatever reason he could have actually popped or rested this uh rose dante and then attacked into his life and he actually would have killed him because he doesn't have a whole like counter in hand or it, it, there was a chance for him to kill him now of course he uh now i forgot he has a zero cost event so he does have the counter but he's just not playing around the cards that he should be playing around and of course in this situation right here it doesn't actually come back to haunt him but it very well could have and i noticed that a lot of people whenever they win games they feel like they played it perfectly but there's so many mistakes that you could make in these games that even though you did win could have cost you you know the game in a, in a different situation if you got a little bit unlucky with your draws or they got really lucky with their life or triggers or if you know if they found some way to win in their deck that you didn't expect so what you want to do is you want to play around all of these cards so that in an ideal situation even if they do draw the cards they need you're still playing around them to the best of your ability and you're also building really good habits in the process and you're going to be able to do it much easier without even thinking later on if you get them down now so that being said, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys on my next video. Be sure to check out MoonlightTCG.com for the Pro Tour and our playmats and our custom binders that are coming out in the next couple days. So be sure to check that out. Peace.